Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. Mark and Steve here in the studio in beautiful Prescott, Arizona. We're talking about Final Cut Pro 10.4, specifically 360 video editing. And Steve is going to amaze us with some additional things you can do. Tricks of the trade. Tricks of the trade. Of the, right. Of the developing, evolving, constantly changing trade of 360 video. Right. And there's some tools that you're going to want to put to use uh, for 360 videos where you perhaps were shooting in an environment where you don't have uh, releases for the people in the environment. You're okay. still required to have releases for yeah, people. Yeah. Or maybe you're shooting something where there's a logo, a branding that needs to come out. Much trickier, right? Because a 360 is everything in the scene and everybody in the scene. And you can't just publish that without people's permission. Right. So I want to show you some of the new 360 effects that, well, one in particular, okay. um, and how to work with it in this scene. So, awesome. so here's a, uh, a 360 scene I shot at my church. Is my daughter there? She's she's singing on their on their worship team here. And just so you know, you can be really clever about hiding the camera rig. Yeah, I'm going to look down here. No no nader patching because I deliberately put the stitching box, but we used the Aura Eye, which has a live stitching. We put it under the staircase. So, so wait. So where's the camera? The camera is actually right here in the shadowy area. It's oh, actually right. You can't see nice, it. Nice, because the shadow's hiding the it. The shadow's hiding it. Very cool. Okay. Right. So I just want to point out, sometimes you're going to be yeah. kind of like smart about where you place yeah. the camera. You can get away with hiding yeah. it so you don't have to No hide. fixing it in post. No fixing in post, right. Nice. So I'm skimming, or excuse me, I'm looking around the scene here, and it's, it's cool. It's a nice little auditorium. And I want to focus on the bass player in the back. The bass players maybe has some branding on on his shirt. shirt there, okay. and we really don't want the going out with that. So we're going to use some of the, again, the effects to, to okay. remove that. So I'm going to open the effects browser, and uh, I'm in the 360 category, and I'll scroll down here. You'll, you'll see that there's some effects that have been specifically formulated for 360. There's yes. a 360 channel blur, 360 Gaussian blur, 360 Aura. I'm just skimming over there, Bloom. And you think, all right, well, these are all like, effects that just really do weird things to the image. <laughs> but if you think about it, most of these tools are for fixing or addressing things. Yes. They're not necessarily to add a look to your video. Okay, they're right. not stylized filters or right. anything. They're, they're... The thing I want to point out about them is that they're specifically formulated for the 360 world. Um, this is what I mean. If I go to the normal blur category and I throw on a Gaussian blur, Okay, and yeah. just just so you can see this, I'm going to open up the color the color board, and I'm going to crank up the exposure because it's it's a dark scene, and I want you to see that. Look at if you can see the scene; it doesn't do a clean there's clean job on the seams hmm. when you add oh, a, like a the standard seams effect. Get affected, the yeah. seams get affected because the blur doesn't cross the seam correctly. That's correct. Okay, so, it's blurring each side of it separately, and it really accentuates the seam. That's right. Okay. I wanted. I, I think it was important for people to yeah, see that. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that color board effect, and uh, go ahead and uh, go back here and remove the Gaussian blur, the normal Gaussian blur, because I want to work with the 360 effect. Now, if I put on the, if I use the 360 blur, I I'm not going to do it, but just trust me, the seams look perfect. Yeah, looks okay. Look, look great. So, what other effects do we have in here? Well, one. Uh, that I'm interested in is I, I need something to kind of, to blur out uh, that shirt. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in. Well, we'll zoom in in a second. So I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna find. Uh, I'm just gonna use this caution blur. Just throw that on the clip, mm -hmm. and immediately it blurs everything, right? But we can constrain it to just the areas we want with a mask, just like any other effect. Because all effects in Final Cut Pro 10 have built-in masks. That's right. Including the 360 version. Exactly. Okay. So if I go up here to the top of the effect, there's that little button here. Right. I go ahead and click that. I can choose a shape mask or a color, or a color mask. mask. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a shape mask. And right now I'm not seeing the controls. Again, this gets me almost every time. You have to turn off any of the transforms, including okay. reorient. So reorient turn right. Yeah. So what I'm going to want to do is, is start making this uh, this size that I need it, and I'm just going to get it in the general area uh, first, so in the general area, and then I'm going to want to zoom in because you're going to, it's going to, it's much harder to work uh, when, you know, he's sitting at the back of the stage, right? So right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, move this, I'm going to resize, resize this, and I'm going to bring the softening way, way down. Let's bring this here. 
You probably don't need quite so much blur. Right? I know. Well, yes. That's, it's the, it helps you see it. The, it helps clearly. me see it. And you're right. The blur is very, very heavy handed right now. So I'll just go ahead and just do that. You get the idea. Mm -hmm. you get, that, get, that, get that in there. And then, like you said, you're, you're going to want to uh, adjust the amount of blurring. So here, I don't have quite as much blur. See, just yeah. enough to where you can't make you can't really out. can't really see what's on there. can't really see what's on there. Yeah. So the, the great thing is um, when, when I move around the sphere, that... that Blur effect tracks. Yeah, it sticks to it. St yeah, he's, because he's the camera is stationary. Right, so it's sticking to him. Mm -hmm. All right, so I move that around. It's blurred, right? Yeah. As now, long as he doesn't doesn't move around. Right now, so, well, he does. <laughs> and, and unless this was an orchestra, <laughs> right? That bass player is going to move around. around. Okay. He's going to be moving around. Right. So, Some bass players are very static. No, yeah, they just they just twist their. <laughs> they just, they just twist, twist. Right. They just right. twist. Yeah. Exactly. But, but sometimes they don't twist. In fact, oh, look at that. He moved. Okay, so uh, I'll, it, this is so easy to dress. I just move the playhead where I want, and for shape mask, I'll just add a keyframe. Right. And I'll just move the playhead to the place. He, oh, he starts to move out there, and I'll just move the mask, and another keyframe is automatically set. This right. is this is standard fare, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is. And it's pretty quick. And it's really quick. Uh -huh. it's, yeah, there's very, very, very quick. So I'm just going through here and moving the mask, and it's adding keyframes, and and look, it's essentially tracking, no, it's tracking with, yeah. with him. So, and then of course you can make little adjustments along the way, but it's fairly simple to to deal with this sort of thing. Right. Yeah. And if you change the shape or rotation of the mask, those will those will animate as well. Yeah, you, as you do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Very cool. So one last thing, I said I want to deal with a color correction. The scene's just a little bit too blue for me. It's very blue. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to fit. And I'm going to open up the awesome new color correction tools in Final Cut Pro okay, 10 so the color inspector. The color inspector. Uh -huh. And I'm not going to use any of the color board. I'm going to use a new uh, feature, which, you're, which you've talked quite a bit about. I'm going to talk about the hue saturation curves. And these are all curves where you can do very targeted corrections on specific color regions within the image. And yes. then you can either boost the saturation or you can change the color or you can work with the luminance. Each of these curves does something very specific. Yes. Now what I want to do is reduce the saturation of the blue. It's okay. uh, just it's, the blue. It's the uh -huh. blue is just, just too saturated for me. So I'm going to use the hue versus sat control. Okay. I'm going to select the eyedropper and it turns blue and I'm just going to sample. I'm going to click the stage right yes. there. And as soon as I do that, I'll get a control point right there in the hue versus that. That's saying that's the value yeah. at that point, that's that, that, that pixel, that's uh -huh. that hue. So what I could do is to reduce the saturation. So I'm just going to grab this and then start pulling down. And I'm, reducing, I'm essentially reducing the saturation of that sampled color. Yeah. So you, you can, can see, see it's right really, right you can uh -huh. completely see it. Right, and then if you want to get, if you want to increase the tolerance, you can drag these little control points here, which are it's the I, I range. To range, I can anchor uh -huh. right uh -huh. for the range that's being affected. So I just widen it a little bit, and it's definitely not as blue as it used to be. And you know, maybe I, yeah, maybe I did like a little bit of the stage line. I'll push a little back. Nice. The other thing is, Rachel's face looks a little bit too. Um, Kind of yellow, yellowish for me. Yeah, she's being hit with yellow, yeah, yellow lights. Light. Uh -huh. So this is where this other tool comes in. I love this tool so much. It's this, I know it says orange, but it's really color versus sat. You, any you, color. Any color. Yeah. So I'm going to get this little eyedropper here, and I'm just going to sample her face here. And notice it changes from orange to yellow versus yes. sat, because it sensed that there's a lot of yellow in those pixels. So uh, right there, I'm going to add a control point. In fact, so, I might just... So these are the brightness values from the darkest to the brightest that's right, values darkest. of that color. I'm glad you pointed that out. Uh -huh. You're right. But now I could you know, get started. Now, notice I can go to the extreme. I'm really pulling the yellow. Yeah. And now she's actually turning. Well, her really, flesh tones are a little pale. A little pale. Yeah. I want some yellow in there, but I'm saying you can, you can really push it or I can bring it down. Yes. The point is I'm just, I, color correction, as you know, is all about subtlety. So I'm yes. just going to just bring it down and just reduce the amount of yellow in her face. I'll then go ahead and reset this back to fit. And if, if I play this, I've not only dealt with the, the bass player, but now there's a lot less right. blue in the scene. Toggle the correction on and off with the oh, yeah. box there. You see the, yeah, you can really see the difference. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Nice. So, there's some tools. Cool. So a combination of a 360 tip and a color correction tip, which are two of the big new features in Final Cut Pro 10.4. Yeah, I had to get that in. Nice. Absolutely. Can't let you have all of yeah. the color correction <laughs> glory. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so um, RippleTraining.com for in-depth training on 360 video editing in Final Cut Pro 10 and advanced color correction. So check those out. And thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.